have no thoughts on it. Old music. Only, we're the only people that's doing it as well as we are, you know. Try to guy want to be hurt for it too. We all know that if the Dallas Cowboys or the San Francisco 49ers or the Pittsburgh Steelers were doing the so-called tush push, it would be the greatest, most genius play ever invented. But because it's the Eagles, these people want it banned. King Ding by here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. Nobody is going to convince me, nobody, that if it was any other team, let's say the Cowboys, let's say the Niners, the Giants, uh, the Patriots with Belichick, if it was any other team that invented the so-called tush push, uh, they would say it's iconic, it's unstoppable, it's genius. But because it's the Philadelphia Eagles, People hate it. They want it banned. They don't think we should be able to do it. They want to see our quarterback get hurt. Absolutely ridiculous. They're all frauds. I don't buy any of it. I know because it's the Eagles, they don't like it. Now, we're going to get into it and a whole bunch more in a second. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored, the most throttled, pause, Eagles content creator in all of the internet. If you've been subscribed for a while, I just want to thank you so much for all the support you give to me. It truly, truly means a lot. Um, I had another video that I was getting ready to put out, but I kind of wanted to talk about this whole tush push thing because it's driving me nuts. And first of all, I got to say, I hate the name tush, tush push, push tush, whatever the hell they call it. Push tush, tush push. It sounds like something you do before matrimonial duties. You know what I mean? It's like step one in the process. A little push tush here, a little push tush there, and then wah, 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 babies everywhere. I don't like that name. I like, I do like the brotherly shove. I think that's a perfect name, and I think we're going to go by that because it sounds much, much better. Uh, the push tush don't sound right. It just don't. It don't sound like it should have anything to do with football. However, people hate it. People absolutely despise it. Yet, every one of these teams that are out there can do it. They all have the right to go out and try to do it. And some teams have tried to do it, and they have not been able to do it. They don't have the quarterback that is strong enough, okay? And and most of you guys know what I'm talking about. If you don't, I'm talking about the formation the Eagles get in on a short yardage situation where Hurts quarterback sneaks and then they push him forward. Um, that's what we're talking about. Um, a lot of people want this band. They don't like it, okay? And to me, I feel like this. You should never ban a play because one team is successful in it, you know? And listen, if these coaches are so smart and these people are such geniuses, why haven't they figured out how to make it work for themselves? They have every right to go out and do it the same way. They have the same right to go try to do it, but they can't do it. I mean, I'm surprised you haven't seen somebody like Belichick get like a big running back and let him take the snap and then do it. You know, maybe put a couple offensive linemen behind the quarterback and pick him up and, and push him forward because they're so much bigger. I mean, th there's a lot of different ways and things teams can do, but because it's the Eagles, they don't like it. You know, that's, that's the thing that pisses me off the most is only because of us, they don't like it. I mean, here's... Here's what Chris Sims said about it, right? Uh, Chris Sims on the pound Eagles brotherly shove, because that's what we're calling it now, quarterback sneak. Quote, if I was a defensive coach, I'd be go, I'd be going headhunting on the quarterback here. So he would be committing penalties. Go crazy, try to kill the quarterback. That's what I do. I don't mean it like that. Well, I don't mean kill, but make him pay. Make him think twice about it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's okay. It's okay because the Eagles are following the rules. It's okay to helmet to helmet our quarterback or hurt him because they can't stop it. I mean, these guys all sound like a bunch of babies. All right? Um, you want to change the rule, change the rule. There's nothing 
we could do about that going forward. But it's legal right now, and there's, and there's nothing anybody could do it. And if I'm the Eagles, every time I have a chance to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep pissing people off because every time you do it, it infuriates. It infuriates the other team, their other fan bases, and I want to see them all get pissed off and lose their minds. Let it happen. Uh, teams should be able to figure out how to stop it. And, you know, teams should also be figuring out how to do it themselves. I'm sure that they can come up with many different type of plays, you know. Uh, you know, I, I do like the name change, though. I got to tell you, um, the, you know, the brotherly shove, it works. And, and here's what Nick Sirianni said about the possible name. And I know so much has been made of it. Did you have any? Is that what we're calling it? I guess. Okay. Uh, I used that. Brotherly shove. Is that brotherly, sh name? brotherly shove. Can we just go with that? Whatever comes up first in the search engine. Yeah, um, I kind of like that. I do too. <laughs> so see, Nick Sirianni kind of likes it. And then they talk to Jalen Hurts about it. And, you know, his, his attitude is basically like, he don't care. It works. We're going to do it. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. You Literally, there was somebody on Twitter uh Wanting and calling and hoping that Jalen Hurts would get hurt for it. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. But I think these people have lost their mind. And I'm telling you, if this was the Cowboys that did this, it would be iconic. It would be like it would be like their victory formation thing where they do the thing, you know. Uh, it would be considered something like that. If it was Belichick, it would be like, the greatest coach invented an unstoppable play. Genius. It would be genius. But because it's the Eagles, they don't like it. Uh, I, I think, I say, let them all cry. Let them all be babies. I really don't care. Matter of fact, I'm just going to keep doing it more. Just do it. Every time you have a third and one, do it. Third and one, do it. Third and one, do it. Just keep doing it and driving these people nuts. You know, and if they want to start hitting helmet to helmet and, and trying to hurt your quarterback, then you know what? Those refs better call the call the flag uh, because the Eagles are not doing anything wrong. And like I said, I don't understand. Why, why not get a big running back, 225 running back, teach him how to take a snap and then do it yourself? Maybe put one of the offensive linemen, one of your backup offensive linemen back there and let them pick him up and push him. It's the rules. Play by the rules. You, every team has the right to do it uh, also. Just because they can't do it, and we have seen teams try it, and they can't do it, it's not our fault. Yet, we were supposed to bend the knee to the rest of the league. I say to hell with it, make it worse, go at them, and make them all pay. That's what I say. Now, um, there's a couple other things I want to talk about today. First of all, it looks like we're going to have some issues uh, with health at safety again. Safety, I mean, we're constantly hurt at the safety position here. From blanket, from Blankenship missing week two, now you have Evans and Sidney Brown are not even practicing. They had a walkthrough today, and they're not even, they're not even participating. Uh, Sidney Brown with a hamstring. So we may be down two safeties, and I consider to believe that this is the one position that we're going to end up seeing the Eagles make a trade for at some point. It just it just makes too much sense to me. Uh, I like Blankenship. I like Sidney Brown. But I, think, I still think you could use another guy there, especially if they don't think Sidney Brown's ready to be the full-time starter. Why not go out and get Jeremy Chin for one year? Like, even if you don't want to keep him long-term and you just want to use him the last year of the contract so you have somebody, uh, you know, for one year, maybe you want to have a bridge of safety and basically let Sidney Brown take that job next year. But in the meantime, have somebody like a Jeremy Chin back there. I think it's, you think you got to do it. Now you have Evans hurt. Now you have Sidney Brown hurt. And that leaves us, what, with uh, Blankenship and Edmonds. Not been really impressed with what I've seen from Edmonds. So we got to watch that safety spot because I'm not sure if these guys on a short week are going to be able to go come Sunday. So we're going to have to see, and I do think this is an area where the Eagles are going to have to look to make a move. Um, last thing we got to talk about is what Nick Sirianni, my cannoli-eating coach, said at, uh, in the press conference today. He basically said that the red zone problems he's been obsessing about, it's been keeping him up late at night, and it's 100% his fault. Now, 
I love that that he's making you know himself accountable for it, but that we know that's not true. The Eagles have had bad penalties. They've turned the ball over. Um, they've had drops. Uh, the whole team has to be better in the red zone. But what I do like is the acknowledgement that we have to take it up a few notches. We've got to get better in the red zone. Uh, you know, you could have a bad game here in the red zone, but when it turns into something that's all year long, it always haunts teams. I mean, even in a game, let's face it, how many times have you seen teams, you know, go uh, move the ball, get into the red zone, and then settle for field goals? They kick three, four field goals. They wind up losing the game because you couldn't, make, you couldn't score touchdowns. I think Dallas is having that problem right now. Um, I believe that the Eagles need to get it sorted out. I believe that the Eagles will get it sorted out. And at the end of the day, I think we'll be fine. But uh, it starts this week, man. Washington game is going to be a good game. Um, I have a video, and, and basically a video I've already done, talking about the state of the NFC East, talking about Washington and how I actually think Washington is a, in some ways a tougher matchup than when we play Dallas, but I'll save that for the other video that I'll be releasing either late tonight or later tonight or early in the morning tomorrow. I am streaming tomorrow night's game, so uh, you might want to come hang out with me there, but I definitely want to get that video up because I got a lot to say on the division and what I've seen and what I where I think it's going, uh, but the Eagles have to get better at the red zone. They've got to get a thousand times better because right now, um, it's not good enough. We should have we should have put 40 points up on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It should have been a blowout. We only got 25 points because we stalled out in the red zone too much. So it's a problem we definitely have to take care of. And as far as all the talk this week, and especially today, on the brotherly shove, uh, I think these people are all nuts. I think, you know, instead of crying about uh, it should be illegal and you don't like stop it. Stop it. The best way for it, the play to go away, stop it. And if you're a team and you're a genius like Bill Belichick's supposed to be, go figure out how to make it work for your team. Make it work all the time. You know, use your running back instead of quarterback in that position. Put an offensive lineman back there that can push, push better than DeAndre Swift or Kenneth Gainwell. Do something like that, but stop complaining and crying about it. And yes, I, I have no doubt in my mind that by next off, next year, they will outlaw this rule. If it was any other team, they wouldn't have done it. But because it's us, you know what they're doing. They're going to outlaw it. But in the meantime, I bother and I drive the league absolutely nuts all year long. I drive teams nuts all all year long, and I don't care. Let them all cry. Let them all complain. Just keep doing it. Keep bothering them, and I love it. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's how we vision, baby. We're all just living in it. All right, so when looking at the spread for the Eagles and Washington this week, and I forgot to talk about this in the video, but DraftKings Sportsbook right now, shout out to them. They have the Eagles are eight and a half point favorites over Washington. I love this number. I love this number. This tells me the Eagles are going to win big on Sunday because when it's like, you know, when it's like four, five, and you're at home, then sometimes I think it's like, uh, like what what are they doing? What do they know? But plus eight and a half points, I really like that. I would actually take the Eagles here. I would take the points because I think I think the Eagles are going to win by at least eight and a half points. I think by at the very least they're going to win by nine points. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting line in my opinion. Denzel Washington out. <laughs>